Well, good morning, and um, are we recording? We're recording. Oh, well, I'll set up then. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, it's okay. Today we're at the Sigma Espresso Cafe. Or Sigma, your choice. Yeah, is it Sigma or Sigma? I haven't a clue. I haven't a clue. It's I... the Greek symbol out the front, which mm -hmm. is Sigma. Sigma. With a hard S, yeah. But, but they've taken a bit of a, uh, a turn on it. This is a really, really nice coffee shop. Very like contemporary, it. minimalist, excellent coffee. They've mm -hmm. got pastries as well. And it's really, really early on a Sunday morning. So they <laughs> open up. <laughs> yeah, um, they're open at seven on a Sunday morning. Just for us, yeah. Yesterday I did a, a we're actually recording with a new system today. We've got some lapel mics and I've got my, uh, my new laptop. So if it looks a bit different. third new system in as many weeks. Yes. Um, I was speaking yesterday about the longest beach in Thailand and a lot of people had been searching online and they'd found the longest beach according to Quora or Google or something and then I said no 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 Turtle Beach the beach that we live at is in fact the longest beach in Thailand and I got out the Google measuring stick to prove it mm -hmm. I watched that yes you did but uh, other people have contacted us since and in fact, we pale into insignificance yeah. compared to the yeah. actual longest beach in Thailand. Let me share this with you. Oh, I hope you can find it now. And remembering that thousands of generations have grown up, well, hundreds of generations have grown up on this beach, not knowing any other beach in the world, you know, exists, so to speak. And, and so it didn't matter to them. The, on the list of well-known beaches in Thailand, this does not figure at all. But uh, if you see it on the map, it's quite obvious that it is indeed a very long beach, and it's called pra uh, Prak Muang Muang Prak Beach. Prak Muang Muang or Muang, as we are, I don't know. Beach, uh, which is in Patalung, and sort of uh, edges into the Songkla province as well on the Gulf of Thailand, and it's, uh, so it's down south. Mm -hmm. uh, very nice, long, well, I don't know if it's nice, I've never been there, but it is a very, 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 very long beach. About 100 kilometers, I'd estimate, on, on Google. So mm -hmm. um, if you are looking for the longest beach in Thailand, we've done all the work, the argument's over, it's the Prak Mung Beach. Listen, if you live on Prak Mung Beach, I've got to believe in this day and age, with more than 100 kilometers of beach, there's a Farang living there somewhere, uh, or a native English speaker of some sort. If you live there, did you know that yours was the longest beach in the world yes. in, in Thailand? Did you move there for that reason? What do you do on the longest beach? Why would beach? you move? I want to move to the longest beach in wherever. Well, if you are a drone pilot, let's say you need a lot of room. You, you fly battling kites competitively. If and you've you got you to think about size. size. <laughs> you gotta th or you married a woman or a man from that area and you, you move there, there wherever it was. There's a lot of people living in, in the outskirts who just moved there because that's where she was born. Uh, at any rate, let us know what it's like. And how do we pronounce your Mung. Ours is Mung, meaning tin mine. The uh, other one means? Don Mung means civic entity. Uh, the Don Mung Airport, uh, uh, Mung in, any, in that middle tone, I think. Uh, it just means city or town, Mung. Mung Thai, the, the nation of Thailand, Mung Thai. Now we're <laughs> speaking about the longest beach. Um, somehow <coughs> you found the smallest duck. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Yeah, this is, is, is Bob on a Sunday morning. This is Bob. <clears throat> the, the duck is the reflection of Bob's psyche at any particular moment. And usually he's big and boisterous and loud. Uh, this morning on a Sunday morning, he's, uh, he, he, he's more quiet and reserved. But the duck exists, Bob the duck exists for him to shut me up when I start rolling. I don't know if I'll do that this early on a Sunday Might morning. Might get a good I mean, use today. Um, so, yeah, anyway, Bob is there, even though you can't see yeah. him. I think Bob is a reflection of your brain size sometimes. A lot of people watch this show in the hopes that you will duck me. <clears throat> when I get going, he, he squeaks the duck and I well, shut up. Well, there you go. Duck, that because in uh, radio terms, when you do uh, uh, turn the mic off just quickly, that's called ducking the mic. Is it? So, so yes, there is a... Ah, I'll be damned. ...historical precedence. Look at me being relevant for once. Uh, what happened to your shoes? You now you lost your shoes <laughs> yesterday. What happened with that? <laughs> My brand new shoes. 
Well, in the mornings. You've only got two pairs. In the mornings, I'll either ride, yeah, true, but these were the new ones. Uh, I'll either ride the bicycle down to the old tin mine and walk on the beach, or if I'm feeling particularly lazy, I'll just walk out of my front door and walk to the beach and walk, as I did yesterday, down to the inlet. Uh, I don't know how far that is, a few kilometers and back. So I'll wear my shoes to get across the grass because at this time the grass is, uh, this particular week, the grass is after the festival. Oh boy. Uh, there's broken glass, there's, there's, there's all sorts of n Dead nasty bodies. stuff. Yeah, old food and uh, dog uh, remains and, and perhaps even human sanitary waste on the grass behind where the big market is. You smell so quite anyway, a lot of that human sanitary waste on Monday. Well, you could, week. yeah. So oh. anyway, I wore my shoes to cross the grass. When I got to the sand, I kicked off my shoes. It's difficult to walk for six, seven kilometers in flip-flops on the sand. So I go barefoot. And yes, I've seen needles on the beach. I've seen broken glass, spiny <coughs> puffer fish. There's all kinds of things that can damage your feet. And I have stepped on stuff, but it's just way easier and way more pleasant to walk barefoot. So I left my shoes at the edge of the sand. And you left your shoes. I left my <laughs> shoes forever on the edge of the sand. They're Holy gone now. Sand. I don't think the tide came in and took them away. I think that somebody saw a new pair of shoes and they had somebody in their family who wears 12 and a half and they they took grandpa or uncle larry home a pair of shoes but you found them no no oh, you no. haven't found no, them. no 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 oh, they're, they're, gone. they're gone to god they're gone somebody picked them up and took them away might have been ross you know ross spends every morning out in front of my house practicing his chip shot right and are your size shoe size 12 and a half 12 and a half in in american terms i don't know what that is i'm here. eight and a half i'm I, tiny shoes yeah I, I just buy the biggest thing they have in the store whatever color it is whatever style it is i have to have closed toes walking around thailand you need to protect your toes you you, you don't want to walk around and flip i don't want to walk around in flip-flops so i buy whatever has got a closed uh, a, a toe a kind of a toe cap or something like that so you love crocs uh, I do, I do. I, I used to wear Crocs. I don't see them sold on Turtle Beach. I only buy stuff on Turtle Beach. Um, we, uh, back in Australia, we had an Olympic swimmer called Ian Thorpe. Mm -hmm. I Thorpe know the name. The Thorpedo. And uh, he was a pleasant uh, young man, did Australia well for many years, uh, swimming at the Olympics, winning lots of medals. He had size 17, or oh, I suppose he still has, size 17 feet. <laughs> Uh, you just got yeah. these big Hard flippers. To fit. Yeah. How do you beat that? Well, I know how Ian Thorpe feels. He must have spent a lot of time in his life shoe shopping. You got to go in five stores to find a store that's got 17 and a half. And then I'm sure, just like me, Ian Thorpe bought whatever they had. Whatever they had at 17 and a half, that's what he was wearing to work. It's the same problem when you go to the, all these markets uh, or even just the, uh, the sort of the small stores in town to buy a shirt or something. There's nothing bigger than a, mm -hmm. no. well, they call it an L, but it's a Thai L, L. which yeah. is about the same as an XX, yeah. sort of a, an S2, like yeah. a small Thai. L for a large pygmy. Yeah, I could usually get one of their shirts around my left arm and that's about it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, thus the checkered shirts that I always wear. There's one place in town that sells shirts of my size and they're all uh, a plaid and thus the plaid shirts that I wear. Well, there's method behind your madness. There is, for once. Now, uh, a bit later on, we're gonna be talking about the different types of expats here in Thailand and see which category that you fit into. Yours too. Uh, we're both very different types of expats. Uh, I'm a, mm -hmm. a hard working, uh, mm. earnest, um, law abiding, law abiding foreigner, mm. and Steve is a capable, successful, and I am none of those. <laughs> I am successful. I am successful here because you found Turtle Beach. I found my Turtle Beach. That's and success. I set the bar where I know I can achieve success. Thanks for telling me that I got my glasses on my head, by the way. Oh, you have your glasses. I on got your my head. glasses Was on I, my head. Am I wardrobe now? Well, that'd am be I wardrobe? Clearly not. Yeah. Oh man, the glare. At any rate, yeah. Ha I, ha ha. That's yeah. never been said to me before. <laughs> true, true, mea culpa. So true. you're going to grab your notes All and right. uh, we'll go through some of your things. <laughs> and we're going to be looking at the 10 different types of expats 
There's the expats um, that make the same joke 50 every, times a year and expect the same <laughs> level of laugh. <laughs> wow, we're a little brittle this morning. All right, so it before we get to that, before we get to that, we'll do Steve's little random notes. These are just things I write down during the week. On uh, Norell's notebook. In Norell's notebook. And, uh, oh, the first one, there was a lot of talk about daylight savings time. We have this thing in America. Well, other daylight. countries have it as do well. They? Yes. Oh, I, I'm not aware of other countries. Uh, but yeah, we, we, we have daylight savings time. Some people hate it and some people are perfectly ambivalent about it. Hey Siri, where was daylight savings invented? I think we can claim could, that. Could be interesting. In 1895, mm -hmm. New Zealand. Oh, hey, congrats, Kiwis. Entom entomologist and astronomer George Hudson made the first, then I have to go, there we go, so it's New Zealand. And they're at a sort of, they're one of the first countries for each new day, because they're oh, the date line close is, to the date is line. right there. They're the first people to see the, the, the calendar click yeah. over. Yeah. We um, had a huge controversy when they introduced daylight savings in Australia, probably during the, the 70s or something. And uh, all the farmers were saying, oh, it completely disrupted the cows. And other people saying, mum saying, oh, no, we can't have it because it'll fade the curtains with all that extra uh, daylight every day. <laughs> Uh, but I used to enjoy it as, as a Melbourner, we used to have, um, the, uh, because we're sort of quite south, and so by the time the sun set, with daylight savings, it was around about 9pm. So those long, hot summer evenings are uh, great memories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did it go in Iowa? Oh, I suppose... Uh, do all the states do different daylight no, savings? No, I think national, or, it's a national thing. And I did not grow up on a farm, but I went to high school with a bunch of farm kids. Uh, I imagine that uh, uh, they appreciated it because yes, you do get to, uh, uh, when you're working, when you're out in the morning feeding your cattle or whatever you're doing, that the now you get that hour of sunlight uh, rather than in the evening when you're just lounging around the house. Uh, so I imagine the farm people enjoyed it. Me, in my life right now, you know, I brought it up because there was all this argument every year. There's all, and, and the majority, I suppose, of my Facebook friends are Americans. And in our culture currently, it's one of those things that divides the nation. And some people see daylight savings as a whatever, oh, no, no, and no. some people see it as not. And uh, for me, I see, you know, it's one of these things that for the past 18 months, I see it going on in social media and I think, my God, did I ever care about that? Was there a time in my life when that mattered to me? Because now it doesn't. Now I, I get up when I wake up. I go to sleep when I go to sleep and I have no cattle to feed. I have no job to do. Uh, I am just kind of floating leisurely through retirement and very happy to do that. And in Thailand, <laughs> they don't have daylight savings. The uh, 77 provinces all have the same time and all the, it's the time. same time all, yeah. all year. And I, you know, if it wasn't a conversation in social media, I wouldn't be aware of it. I don't yeah. wear a watch. And I don't know that many people, except collectors, I suppose, uh, I don't think many people wear a wristwatch. You don't see Or a former deputy PM that it used to have a, right. quite a large a collection. luxury. Watch yeah, collection. if you if you would like a favor from this gentleman, oh, the, donated. They were donated to him. By yes, of course, uh, they were donations. Yes, yes. Uh, and and yeah, that's that's fine allegedly. For, my son collects designer watches. He loves to wear a wristwatch. Here's my watch. Yeah, I think it has moved to this. I don't, which is less convenient. If all you want to do is well, I mean, know it, the time, you'd look a bit silly walking around like that, wouldn't you? It would be well, but people wear a version of that on their wrist, but. It's, my point is that it, 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 it takes longer to fish that out of your pocket and look at it, but we don't ever have to fish it out of our pocket because we're all constantly looking at it. So it is more convenient now simply to look up in the corner of the phone and see what the time is than to go like this. Uh, but yeah, you don't, I don't see people wearing wristwatches and I certainly do not. Oh, I, I don't need to know the time unless I'm meeting you at 7 a.m. on a Sunday morning. So in the past, if there was uh, some transgression or crime, the police say, well, what time did it happen? They said, oh, so just after six or maybe sort of sometime after seven, 
But these days people go, oh, it was uh, 6.38 because they've just uh, been on their phone five minutes before and they know exactly what the time is. Or there was somebody there recording the crime because now there's always somebody there with a phone and there's a timestamp <laughs> on, the, on the file. Yeah. And, and you know exactly when this took place or the police would know exactly when this took place. It's a brave new world. Um, in Australia with daylight savings, uh, we have different states and territories and the different states have got different daylight saving start dates and it just causes all I'll sorts bet. of mayhem <laughs> there's a, an area for example up in northern new south wales southern queensland uh it's a tweed heads and uh, byron bay there's all these it's quite populous around there and so you may very well live um if you're working in an office in one state you could be living a kilometer away in another yeah, state sure but suddenly you have to get up an hour earlier to get to work because that yeah. anyway and uh, the airline schedules and it causes all sorts of problems and um, I don't know if they've ever got it sorted out I haven't been there for 13 years I don't know what they do in Australia anymore I, I know that, that the last eight years of my working life I uh, worked at Fort Bliss in El Paso Texas but I lived in Las Cruces New Mexico uh, broccoli is legal in New Mexico. It is not legal uh, in Texas, certainly not legal on an army base. But a lot of my co-workers knew that Steve was crossing the border back and forth every single day. And so every now and then I would come on the base with various bits of contraband in the car doing favors for uh, my co-workers. And it was that, you know, uh, living on the border, living on the border. My ex-wife's family up in Renong, they're all smugglers. I don't know what they are now. I've had no contact with that family uh, for, God, yeah, 25 years. She smuggled you. But they, you know, uh, Renong is right across the river from what used to be Victoria Point in uh, Myanmar. It's now called it's called Croissant. 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 Uh, at any rate, oh, it, you know, going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth across that river all the time because there's all these sanctions on Myanmar. I used to do uh, it for visa runs. Yeah, visa runs. 30 we used to minute go, uh, boat ride. Very pleasant. When we would visit my ex-wife's family, uh, uh, or we went up there, both of my children were bored and run on, and we would hang around for a month up there each time. And it was, it's just a day trip. You want to go have some good, they had really good Chinese restaurants in Burma in those days. I don't know what it's like now. Uh, and you could go over there and buy a wooden elephant for two bucks and stuff like that and come back. And there was no like visa control, no passport control. You just went across the river as they have been doing for a thousand oh, years. Right. And uh, well, they're doing it now yeah. in the reverse direction. People pouring out yeah. of Myanmar at the moment. I did That's notice, I, I visited Koh Phayam some months ago, uh, which is right up there by Burma, uh, by Myanmar, excuse me. And uh, the place was full of Burmese monks, the, the temples there were crowded, they're living in tents, they've run out of goodies and they're living in tents. Uh, they're all running like hell. Uh, they're a target of the regime and uh, there's, you know, they wear a different color robe and they're- uh, Sort of a, a darker orange, isn't darker, it? Almost yeah, kind a of a ochre, pink. yeah, some earth tone. And uh, yeah, there, there's all these uh, uh, fled Burmese monks, uh, Myan Myanmarese, Myan Burmese. Burmese. Uh, monks uh, hiding in, in, in temples in Thailand now. Ooh. So Would you like another uh, topic? We are right on, um, well, yeah, Myanmar is about three hours north of here. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very, very close. And uh, I am noticing a lot more Burmese around town. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's Looking a, for work. Yeah. If you, if you want to hire busboys, now's a good time. You want to hire somebody to go up on your roof without any safety harness, any safety equipment, and clean your gutters, now's a good time to hire somebody. <laughs> sure. Are we, are we done with the Swiss kicker? The Swiss guy who kicked the physician? Are we done allegedly, with that guy? Allegedly. Allegedly. Kicked. We have to be careful there. Uh, yes, I think um, that, that right. was just a huge trend and then... Good. All right. Good. All right. Well, I won't bring it up. He then. hasn't gone to court yet, so we have to use the word allegedly. Oh, uh, I, this is something uh, I noticed. Where did I see it? Some vlogger, some article, I don't know, was talking about turtles uh, uh, on the Andaman coast. And they said, my cow beach on Phuket is a great place to go uh, during the months of November to May uh, to view turtles nesting. 
yeah, you, 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 you can't view turtles nesting. It happens at two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, and if there's any light on shore, or if they smell human beings on shore, they won't come ashore and make a nest. So this, yes, don't believe that. It's just because you've got don't, your phone and you're waiting there. It doesn't yeah. mean the turtle's gonna come no, to that section of the beach. No, I do find nests on the beach uh, <laughs> in the morning all the time. Uh, female turtles will obey the urge to come ashore and, and dig a nest whether or not they've got eggs ready to lay inside them. Uh, so they'll sometimes in the night come ashore and just dig a hole and go back to the sea. Sometimes they will deposit unfertilized eggs in there if they haven't you know, hung out with a male turtle for a while. And sometimes they will deposit fertilized eggs in that hole. But I do find holes on the beach all the time and with the, the tracks going down huh. to the sea afterwards. So you can see that. You can go to the government hatcheries and you can see the scientists will be very happy to, for a donation, explain to you how they're going to try to bring back the sea turtles. But no, don't believe anything that says, you know, come visit my cow beach because you can view sea turtles nesting. For the two or three people out there who give a crap, <laughs> don't. If you're up in Isan, you don't, you don't care about sea turtles. I get that. But you're going to get a lot more turtle uh, experience if you come up to Tai Mung Beach. Oh, you might, Tai yeah. Mung. Tai Mung. Because yeah. um, we've got two turtle hatchery places. Do the, we? Yeah, well, there's the one in it, our strip, and there's the one up at Tap. Tap oh, Tap Lamu. Tap Lamu. I think they also have one at Maikau Beach in Phuket. I yes, think there are, I think there are there. two there. Yeah. So yeah, the, you can go in and see them in a tank and, and, and read the, yeah. the, the dealies. And that's not bad. That's, it's a nice, you know, for a couple hours, that's not a bad thing to do. I like ours because it's, it's simple and funky. and You just wander and, in and uh, check out the turtles. But I did I see one ones. of those horrible, big, enormous buses there which I've never seen before in the 18 months I've been here. COVID wiped that out. They're, you can tell their parking lots All built. the tour buses. Yeah. <clears throat> These giant monster buses, I, uh, I hate them. Uh, and we never had any of them so far in 18 months in Taimung because COVID ended all of that. Now, now you are allowed to pack 90 people cheek by jowl in a bus again. And, and so I saw one at our turtle hatchery which I think means our turtle, our turtle hatchery, which I think means a couple different things. One, that uh, they're going to close off the back of it. They're no longer. They're going to reopen the uh, the show center, the the aquarium in the front, and they're going to close off the back. And you won't you won't be able to just wander back there among the tanks anymore. Do you think so? Yeah, I would oh. if I was running to joint. Yeah, I'd keep all the tourists up in front. And, and hit them up for 500 baht to come in the aquarium well, and listen yeah. to a graduate <laughs> student speak about turtles. I would do it that way. Uh, and it also means we're going to see those big monsters on our main street, which our main street's only about four feet wide. And we're going to see those big bad boys uh, coming big down turtles? the street. No, big buses. Oh, okay. Big horrible. Oh, I'd love to see some turtles going down the street. Oh, we had spoken last week about red flags. And Before you move on to that, yeah. with it. Cutting through the pregnant pause. Um, <laughs> just a bit of housekeeping. Firstly, we just want to do a shout out to the beach bums in the Philippines. <laughs> right, yeah. Who gave us a shout out last week on their, I think it was their preliminary premiere program. Premiere, their very first attempt at it, yeah. And uh, they said they're going to try and do the same thing. Well, I don't know how because we're not involved, we're not yeah. there. Yeah, it's doomed to failure. No, I, I, wish, them all the, I wish them all the best of luck. They yes. got three dudes, we got two, they got three grumpy old men. They call themselves the beach bums. Very, um, very cool uh, guys. And they're <coughs> sitting literally on a beach in the Philippines, yeah, yeah. waxing lyrical about life there. So it would be very interesting I, to, to watch. I have no idea what they talked about. I could not understand <laughs> They the do word. have very thick- um, Very thick, some kind of UK Cockney accent. Sort of accents. I, I could not understand a word these guys were saying, <laughs> I'm sorry. And uh, the, the sea view behind them was just brilliant light. There wasn't enough, uh, you know what I'm saying? You couldn't actually see the ocean, but those are technical things they can work out. Uh, well, we're into program number 51 and we still get all the technical yeah. things wrong. <laughs> so uh, True, true that. <laughs> we spent 15 minutes arranging the cafe tables. 
arranging the cafe. Yeah, just, you just that there? much. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The sound of scraping metal stool chair uh, uh, legs oh. across the tile floor was uh, very loud. But, so and, hello to the uh, Filipino beach bums. The beach bums. And in the uh, we should also mention that Steve's got his own YouTube oh, channel, thank you. which yeah. is uh, Steve Ross, and there's an E on the end. And um, it, it's probably one of the most famous and most successful YouTube channels in the world. Oh, yes, I think so, uh, definitely. And I don't know what, if you haven't subscribed to it, well, I don't know what, yeah. what's wrong with you. Don't, don't believe that little clicker that tells you how many subscribers and views. There's, there's something wrong with that. There has to be. Once you get yeah, over. I know it's in the millions. Yeah, I know it's in the millions. Once you get over a, a million, it, it, it just leaves those zeros out because I right. can't fit. It, they don't fit in yeah, the little, yeah, the yeah. little uh, cell there. So subscribe to Steve's channel and uh, Steve does Steve's stuff on it. Steve's stuff, yeah. Yeah, including, um, do you want to tell the story about <clears throat> Boontong's Beach Bar? The, the I, famous Boontong Beach Bar. We, we have, the, I was just about to bring it up. Yeah. Uh, tell us about Boontong's Beach Bar, There's a, There's a playlist on my channel uh, called Boontong's. And Boontongs, I used to do videos that were, uh, yeah, get ready. I used to do videos that dramatize short stories that I've written about Thailand. I have five books for sale on Amazon. I used to work for the Nation newspaper and I, I used, I've written books about Phuket and stuff. So at any rate, I was trying to breathe life into these old stories by creating little sets in my living room. I used to build sets in the film industry. And then filming and tableau. Like Bobby these, sits. <clears throat> yeah, you know, a one, 120 or 110 scale. And uh, I've stopped doing it because it's a lot of work and I'm reminded that I am retired now and I don't need to work that hard. But it's there and, and uh, it is a place uh, on Google Maps. Boontong's Beach Bar is a place on Google Maps. It's only, it only exists in my head. But it's got some great reviews. <clears throat> got great reviews. Uh, and the other night, two fellows from America showed up. They had taken a drink. They had taken a taxi from their, their <laughs> very swanky resort Woo! on the beach, down the beach, about, yeah. I don't know, three, four clicks down Natai the beach. beach. Natai Beach. And they had come in the hotel taxi and he dropped them off outside my house at about eight at night. And I'm putting on my, literally putting on my pajamas. I go to sleep at nine o'clock, come hell or high water. Do you have elephant print jammies? <clears throat> no, no, but I, I would love to have a pair if you're thinking about a birthday gift. I wear XXXXXL. These two guys show up, the taxis drop them off. They're in the middle of that deserted beach road. It's darkness in every direction, my house, they come and knock on my door. Can we get a beer here? We've, the reviews on Google Maps are great for this place. It says it's a real happening bar. So we've come all the way up the beach from Nat Hai to, to, to have a beer at Boontongs. And there's Steve in his pajamas with his, in his house full of Barbie dolls and beach trash. And so I took them out. Uh, there is, we have up the road from me two karaoke joints which are the, the local uh, commercial sex industry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, and you can go and you can get a beer. <clears throat> and, and some nice lady will sit next to you and massage your thigh and laugh at your jokes <laughs> and light your cigarettes and do the whole geisha thing. And so I took them up there uh, to those places and uh, we sat for a couple hours and I had a Coke and about half a bag of cigarettes. And these two guys yucked it up. They bought, I think, 16 big quarts of Chang for them in the room, they were buying drinks for all the ladies, and they became very popular, and I sat there and did that. Uh, he says uh, he thinks you're very pretty. Tell him I said thank you. Where does he come from? Oh, he says he, can't, he comes from America. How old are you? Oh. She says she's uh, 19, uh, but she's got a granddaughter who's 19. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and I'm doing this back and forth. But everybody had a good time. The girls got tipped huge, and the boys got a story that they can go back to the office. They 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 came here to golf. I suspect they didn't get what they were going for. Well, it was offered. They 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 declined it because it would have meant taking these women either to one of our local short time hotels or taking them. Are back there to, any? Yeah. Local sure. short time hotels. Yeah, there's one right like 50 meters up from the karaoke. And all these bungalow complexes that, that well, I don't want to. Oh, names. really? Oh, oh okay. yeah, yeah. You can, oh. you can, they, don't, they don't live on tourist trade. Now, that one, the resort, 
uh, is huge. They've got like 40 bungalows because during COVID, they were hired by the government to house quarantine patients. And they took that money and they went from 20 bungalows to 40. And now, I don't know who they're renting them to. Uh, but yeah, they, they would have either had to do that or take them back to their hotel. And they wanted, to, I think, to take them back to their hotel. But I said, probably, you know, your fancy hotel has a no joiners policy. I don't, she would get turned away at the door. <coughs> I, don't, I don't think you could do that. So they, I think the two of them had enough exotica for one evening. And, you know, my experience of Thai golf resorts, the caddies are very open to interpersonal relationships. Uh, they've got you all alone out there for 18 holes and uh, they will flatter you and tease you and flirt with you and, and who knows out of that what dreams may come. So the that woman is stunning. Every, you know, this, 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 the, uh, only pretty women come here to buy coffee. It's amazing. This <coughs> uh, but at any rate, yeah, they went home uh, alone, but everybody was happy. The girls got tipped huge and they got drunk. They, they drank a lot of beer. If the Falang is ordering it, you got to drink it. And the boys had a story they can tell back at the office. This is, this was a kind of local venue that they otherwise would not have seen. And there's nothing different. I mean, that, that thing is that thing wherever you go. It's the same but The only thing, barrier you know. for foreigners is going to be, once you get out of the main tourist areas, that language barrier that would be the major barrier and knowing how you need to, act, to ask steve to come along to, act, to be your like translator I, I think i well you need somebody there and as it turned out one of the girls uh in this place uh, uh spoke fairly passable bar english so these two guys uh, if they had gone in there alone probably could have had a couple beers uh but in those local places, they're put off by Falang because we don't know their rules and they don't know our rules and rules are really important in Asia. Oh yeah. And, uh, and for instance, the, the, the young lady who sat next to me, uh, I, uh, she, she was not like massaging my thigh or lighting my cigarettes or anything. She was kind of ignoring me. And I thought there's something going on here. The, she's not fishing for a tip like these other two gals are. And after about a half an hour, these two very obviously cops <clears throat> in their street clothes come in and she immediately jumps up and go cuddles up with one of these cops. He's her regular beau. He's her regular customer. And she knew he was coming tonight. And the boss lady, the mama son, said, go sit next to the fat fellow. And she did, but she wasn't gonna, she didn't want her beau to walk in and see her cuddled up with a, a customer. Needing your Yeah, leg. needing my thigh <clears throat> or my shoulders or bringing me a cold cloth That's or whatever. That's K-N-E-A-D, -E yeah. not, not Nobody yeah. needs these thighs, no. I can barely use them. So at any rate, rules, rules are really, really important. So if you go in, they're uncomfortable. They don't really know how to interact with you. They're very happy to take your money, but it's just typically, you know, they, they, it is, I think, a conscious effort to keep that type of farang in the faranguetos. They, they would rather that the guys who are here looking for that, they would rather that they stay in Phuket, Padia, Kosmoi, Chiang Mai, Bangkok. Uh, they very consciously uh, herd us into these enclaves, into these ghettos. And uh, I think you, you know, think you had some control over it. <laughs> yeah, and obviously Thai men are going to be much more comfortable doing this without you there, without a white guy there trying to sing like a virgin when they're you know talking about price with a hooker. Uh, the the Thai customers are going to be much more comfortable once you're gone in those places, those venues. We're going to be talking about the ten. Uh, oh, most... we've, we've drifted into that. Okay. Oh no no, no we've still got your notes, but I'm just. F forward promoting. Right. The oh, fact forward that we're promoting. Be yeah. Stay tuned, folks. It. Stay tuned. We'll uh, get there. Coming up soon yeah. is the the ten most uh, well known types of expats in Thailand, and we're going to see which category you fall into. As I just get my <laughs> notes ready, it was a All right, I got, brilliant I'm, article written by this amazing writer. Yeah, I'm, uh, back yeah, in I've 2020. I've heard of the guy. He's won awards and everything. Uh, two last things, and then we'll go to that. Right. Uh, we, we should bring this up because last week we asked people to mention red flags. Oh, yes. What are things that make your spidey sense tingle in Thailand? And uh, one of the things, uh, restaurants that are empty at dinner time, right? 6 p.m. noon and the place doesn't have any customers, 
maybe walk on by keep walking yeah that's a good one these came from viewers and if i was any sort of responsible vlogger i would have written down names obviously i am not and have not uh, uh i'll make you a partner and, and cut you in for 50 percent walk on yeah, by yeah no you don't want to be anybody's partner i no, mean yeah, no. so, uh, you've been here five years ten years you you know something you you you, feel, you know the rules you know the rules you've seen what can happen uh you know the red flags all right you're a grown-up go spend your money how you want but there are plenty of scams in thailand oh, yeah. uh which are done by thais most of them relatively harmless, but scams nonetheless. Yeah. But the worst scams are done by foreigners. Mm. Of like those online romance scams from those uh, online mm. casinos just around the border where people are herded in and uh, mm. uh, it's a, a shocking situation and or, it's ubiquitous at the or moment. Or the guy in the next stool at the bar who you've never met before who says, Mate, don't believe it when they tell you you can't own land in this country. You, you, you work with me and you, I'll make sure that you own the land. By starting that sentence with mate, you're, ref oh, sorry. you're inferring <laughs> that they're an Australian. No, you're inferring say, that Australians are uh, I, I, real estate okay, scammers. Dude, 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 I can help you buy land. Yeah, no, walk away from that guy. Yeah. Uh, and the last one, this comes, I have not experienced this, but it makes sense. If in line you have a Thai correspondent and he or she begins a note with your Christian name, beware, a yes. request for money is coming. Steve, <clears throat> I miss you so much, the buffalo is sick, I need money, right? Whatever it is, if it starts with your name, if they start it with your given name, uh, beware, beware. Yeah, plenty of online scams, just uh, don't answer them. D yeah. Don't start. <laughs> Even if you're bored, don't start the conversation. And, and I don't care how much you love her, you know, if she's asking for money, get out of love her mode and go into businessman mode, or, or he says he loves you, and get, no. The money and, and love need to be compartmentalized and, and separated, in my view. Good life well, advice from Steve. <laughs> yeah, take advice from this guy. The last thing I want to say, and it's just a pet peeve of Steve's, is people put an S on Falang. It's just one Falang, two Falang, three Falang, four Falang. There's no S. It's not Falang. Like sheep. It's not Falang, like sheep. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one sheep, two sheep, three sheep, four sheep, one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. There's no S on Falang, and it's not Falang, and it's not Falang with an L. It's Falang with a rolled R. And uh, that's Steve's uh, gripe for the day. Thank you for your patience. And Allow don't me. ever refer to me as a farang because I find it a bit offensive. He thinks it's offensive. It's not. That's a topic for another day. Um, this article was written by, oh, me. Some hack. Um, and it was republished because, I don't know, they decided to republish it. It's free. It in they own it. They can publish it yeah, sure. they want. And uh, it's published in The Tiger. And it was uh, entitled, The Top 10 Types of Expat in Thailand. Is expat uh, singular or plural? No, that gets an S. You get expats. Yeah. Expats. So, um, blah, 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 a lot of preamble. Brilliant writing, by the way. And uh, it gets into, oh, after a, a, a fair time. <clears throat> There's a lot of ads they put in here. Here we go. This is the, these are the 10 types of expats. All right. We'll see which one you fit into. Now, they use the word top. <clears throat> Can we say the 10 most common or, or 10 easily recognizable? Because top, I, that word is vague and ambiguous. It bothers me. I would say that they're, what are you arguing with the writer? No, that right. word, that single word. And the headlines are not written by uh, uh, writers, they're written by editors. So that word, the I top the editor. 10, top in what way? What, you know, that's vague and ambiguous. Well, I don't there's like There's only that. 10 types of expats. Oh, there's only 10. Only right. 10. The only 10 types of expats. Go on. Nice, neat number uh -huh. because it's a digital. Because 10. we have that many fingers, right? Um, the search for a wife. Mm -hmm. That is a, a reason that some people come to yes. Thailand. Yes. And it could be because they've had an unsuccessful relationship in or their 10. own country or no relationship at all or 10 yeah. and so they think by coming to thailand with a completely different culture yeah. uh, is going to solve that particular problem they do and they are often 
wrong. Particularly the ones who say, this gets my goat, because I consider myself a feminist. And the ones who say, feminism has ruined romance in America. American women are too masculine now. I'm going to Asia where the women are still submissive. <laughs> it's a matriarchy, dude. Women run everything here. Sure. They are in charge of everything but here. But they do it in such a way that they the do men it in such think a way. Yes. they're running things. Yes, they sucker you, dude. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's, I mean, if, you're, you, you, if you are with somebody and you enjoy your time with that person, and they enjoy their time with you by you know go with god dude you're good on you you have achieved something i have never achieved uh but in my experience as an objective observer usually he's wrong he thinks he's getting a submissive princess and what he's getting is a is a, is a intelligent adult woman who now has the purse strings now there are by the way of course many people who do find uh, a lovely, loving wife and settle down and have yeah. a long, happy relationship. However, there <laughs> are also hundreds of thousands of times it goes wrong. Uh, yeah. The writer yeah. put some notes here. He said, mm -hmm. uh, firstly, don't take it too seriously. Mm -hmm. Enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, two, read a couple of hundred stories on the internet before moving in with the Thai GF. Or read a book. Uh, have deep pockets. Yes. And uh, number four, Guys, the bar girls don't actually love you. No, typically no, they, they don't. They're on the job, they're working, they've got a boyfriend or a husband back home on the farm who they are supporting with your money. Yeah. So be aware of that and again, enjoy the time you spend with them and hopefully they will at least to some level enjoy their time with you. Uh, but yeah, no, that's, it's not gonna be, it, it, it rarely turns into love, you guys. But sometimes it does. It does. Yes. Sometimes. Sometimes. Number yeah. two, and uh, this one might be a little bit sexist. It wasn't intended as so, but number two I'll is, be the judge of that. is the businessman, which could be a businesswoman. Yes. Okay. So some people do come here to mm -hmm. start a business. The entrepreneur. Um, many professional expats live mostly in Bangkok and work for big international companies on salaries that would make them rich in any country. Mm. And they can afford to, and they live the high life. Now, a few years ago, uh, there were plenty of numbers around which showed the nationality that contributed mostly to the expat community in Thailand. I suspect that may have changed in recent years. However, if we go back five or ten years, the most numerous expats in Thailand were... The Japanese. Why? The auto industry. The auto industry, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because Hondas, Mazdas, Toyotas, who have I missed out? Subaru. Um, I'm, I'm Daihatsu! <laughs> yeah, I you don't know. have to say it like that. Um, I'm, I'm, I must have missed another one. Anyway, those anyway, are big Japanese yeah. companies. And, and now it's a lot of new Chinese EV companies are moving into Thailand for car manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've got battery plants being built. So yeah. I think the reason for all those expats coming to, uh, to live in Thailand for the auto industry, the, the nationality might, uh, might have pivoted somewhat. However, a lot of businessmen. Now, number three is you. The Steves? The Steve, number three. People called Steve mm -hmm. is uh, one of the most popular, no, it's Fat not. guys with skinny <laughs> legs. Number three. Are you gonna oh, read I'm it? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Retire. This, this is why rehearsal is so important. You need to show up for rehearsal. Uh, actually, we did rehearse this. Uh, retirees, retiring well, in Thailand. We actually should admit, we recorded no. the program yesterday, <laughs> right here. Yeah. And we got to the end and it did not record any no, sound. No. In fact, don't play with the cable, given oh, the problems shit. we had yesterday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so we've done two shows this week. The old we've, we've Yeti, two shows. Yeah. thrown the Yeti out because it's yeah, uh, been causing it. problems. Don't throw it out. Put it on a shelf. That thing has earned a place of distinction. It's going to be painted gold and uh, yes. put on the shelf. Oh, yes. God, yes. Um, so retiring, yeah, retiring Thailand. Thailand. Yeah. Number three, uh, obviously there's a lot of people that come to Thailand to retire. They've mm. uh, worked all their life. They've saved up or they might be getting a pension. Yes. And uh, they come here and they legitimately retire. 
mm. and uh, they live out their life uh, sipping ah. long, tall glasses with coloured liquids uh, with a, a little straw and an, an umbrella on the we, top. We dip fa la la. We sip coffee by the sea. Dip or fa la la. That's what we do. Sip other things. Or make YouTube videos. Yeah. Or collect trash off the beach and glue it to other trash and hang it on the wall. Yeah. Do you think the uh, the, the, the whole notion of retiring, I think, has changed a lot. Uh, certainly since my, my father retired. In those days, you sort of work, 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 then you stopped and then did nothing and were dead in five years. Yes. Um, but five. these days, I think retiring is really just the start of a, 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 new, a new part chapter. of a new yeah. chapter, a new well, part of your, your life. Well, your lips to God's ears, I hope, certainly in my case, yes. Uh, and I think part of that might be, might have to do with the fact that we have better uh, public health now most of us reach retirement age still with our faculties, still with a certain amount of physical health. There are and, exceptions. Yeah, yeah, there are exceptions. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, can I bum a cigarette? Uh, yeah, but I think for the most, yeah, that, uh, certainly in my case, and I can only speak uh, subjectively, uh, yeah, it's, retirement is not the end of something, or not the end of it all, it's the end of that period chapter. or chapter and, and the beginning of a new thing and mm. ain't that grand aren't we lucky to live in this age and in this kingdom and and to have my government pays me specifically not to work thank you uncle sam first thing you've done right now it would be interesting it, what would your life be like if you were living in iowa on I don't know how much money you get from the government, but if you were getting that same amount of money and spending it in America, uh, where would your life be in the scale I, of good? I or... would be sleeping on my mother's sofa. Oh, really? Oh God, yes. Yeah. You... Oh no. That what they I get fifteen hundred US a month in El Paso because I had thought about like I said I would drive ninety minutes to and from work every day from New Mexico to Texas. And I had thought about getting a one bedroom, a cheap one bedroom studio in El Paso so that on those days I don't feel like driving all the way back to Las Cruces, I can just crash in El Paso. So I went around and I looked at it, it's an army base, there's all kinds of small cracker box apartments around it for the young soldiers. And the cheapest, crappiest, worst thing in the most terrible neighborhood was 700 US a month. That doesn't include utilities, that doesn't include uh, insurance that doesn't include food it, it that's just for your rent 1700 a month so that's almost or virtually half of my retirement income just for a place to lay down at night and sleep uh, I, I and everything else is two three four times more expensive uh, health care I just paid out of pocket for a hernia repair, 10,000 baht for an inguinal hernia repair, three, three nights in the hospital, surgeon, anesthetist, everything, 10,000 baht, that's 300 US. Uh, yeah, I could never do that. I'd have to opt into Medicare and that's the other half of my insurance. Squeak the duck, I'll shut up. All right, I'm shutting up. Anyway, the, <clears throat> anyway, that was number three. Uh, number four, the, this is, um, <laughs> I suppose a, a way that people can, if they enjoy Thailand, they can actually find a way of staying here besides, well, there really aren't that many visas if you're no. young. Yeah. So they- Teach English. They teach English. Badly. As some of them are not even English speakers. No, and they, no. They, they teach English. A bunch of bums teaching. I mean, I'm, there are some qualified, competent, capable, dedicated teachers teaching English in Thailand, and if that's you, kudos to you, and, and I appreciate your work. If you keep on playing with that cable. I'm... Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it has all, I did it for a couple years when I first came, and the best gig is in the hotels, bar none. Teaching English in the hotels is a sweet, sweet gig. Uh, but for the most part, it's a place where everybody says, oh, I speak English, so I can teach English. And in Thailand, you can. Typically, historically, they would hire any white face to teach English. And there's a lot of really bad English being taught, but it's a way to get a visa and stay. But then you're dependent on your employer. The day you lose that job, you've lost your visa. And in, in many ways, uh, it's not particularly 
particularly well paid. No. You usually get paid no. more than the, the Thai teachers, but mm -hmm. still it's, um, it's, it's... No, most people do mm. it for the visa. Yeah, I think most sure. people who teach don't teach for the income. Some do, again, some do. Uh, now, some people do legitimately come to Thailand for, number five, the entrepreneurial spirit. Mm. Uh, I, I suppose I might put myself in that particular list. I think so, list. yes. Um, the, the, uh, the, this brilliant writer said, uh, the joke used to be that if you wanted to start a small business in Thailand, just invest in a big business and wait a few years. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and look, there are plenty of businesses that fail. In your country, there's plenty of businesses, small businesses that fail. And I think the opportunity for success in Thailand is uh, just the same as any other country. If you do your homework and you work hard, you've got a much better chance of succeeding. Probably more homework to be done in a foreign country mm. because you need to get your head around all the local rules, the regulations, and uh, the vibe. I mean, so many people have got ideas for businesses in Thailand. Uh, I hear them pitched all to the me time. every, all the time. every day. All the time. But uh, I yeah. see a I see a hole in the market that I can fill, and and some people are successful. You know, I was thinking of that guy you introduced me to at the Junkyard Theater in Phuket. That guy has been there twenty years, and he appears to be wildly successful doing something nobody else is doing. He has identified a need. He is supplying that need, and it is he's having a hell of a lot of fun in his Junkyard Theater, and uh, I admire that guy. But he's one in a hundred. So, you are one in a hundred. You would fit in this category except you have been successful. Um, number six is the bored wife. Now, what we're saying here is that there are quite a lot of men that may get nice big juicy jobs in Thailand and they might be the GM of a hotel, they might be uh, running something here or there, but in many cases they bring their spouse along with mm -hmm. them as well. And uh, sometimes, because they may not have a work permit, or well, they wouldn't, if you're playing with that cable again. Jesus, sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's never been a cable you, you, before. You play with this. You play with a duck. Just sit there, play with a duck and shut up. And, um, and, and so they end up coming to Thailand <laughs> and with not a lot to do. Mm -hmm. And th this can, of course, lead to... Um, Alcoholism. Infidelity, or, or, you know, gambling, other uh, excesses, watching the Kardashians compulsively. <laughs> yeah, so that is called. They are called a trailer spouse by the embassy. I would have to say that in recent years, that, that sort of has changed because in places like Pattaya and Phuket and Bangkok, there are now very uh, well organised women's groups mm -hmm. who get together and do their own stuff. And um, so, yeah, you just need to spend five mm -hmm. minutes online, and you'll find plenty of things to do and you don't have to be a bored wife no, anymore you don't have to two points first there was i don't know if they're still there the bangkok writers block b-l-o-c which was a group of women expatriates in bangkok who wrote fiction and they have put out three or four books of collected short stories some of it quite well done uh, Karen Narula, oh, what's her name? Karen Narula something, uh, this, I think, German woman, fantastic writer, and I've only ever seen her work in these books. So Bangkok Writer's Block, if you're one of the two people who still reads books, uh, or if you're a woman who writes in Bangkok and you want a, a group of uh, similar women, look for the Bangkok Writer's Block. Speaking of names, you mentioned a name, and as you were saying Karen Narula, I was thinking, the last place I thought they would be coming from would be Germany. <clears throat> I made a similar mistake. We had some guests arrive last night mm -hmm. and uh, they made their booking and uh, I went to meet them at a local restaurant. And um, one of them was called, I think I can name them, uh, Anastasia and Leo. And I thought, oh, obviously Russian. Mm, and yeah. so I said, oh, great, good Russian names. Oh, we're from Germany. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Sorry. Faux pas. Yeah. So, uh, apologies. Well, to, here's uh, where the light switches are, and the air conditioning is controlled over here, and I see you. Yeah. Oh, and one last thing. There's one of the best books ever written about Thailand, and the best memoir ever written about Thailand in English. Is but my, even better than this article? Even better. I know that's setting the bar very high, but it was achieved. 
a woman named uh, Carol Hollinger wrote a book called My Pen Rai Means Never Mind. Fabulous book. She was a trailer spouse. Her uh, husband was chief of station for the CIA in 63, 64 in Bangkok. And in those days, the embassy would find the trailer spouse a job so that she didn't fall into alcoholism and gambling and screwing the butler. And so she taught at Chula University for two years. And this book is about her experiences as an Achan at Chula University. And it's marvelous. It's a wonderful, wonderful book. So a trailer spouse does not have to be bored, uh, does not have to be the bored wife. Now, some people do come to Thailand because of a million reasons. Mm. Uh, some of them just come for a fresh start. So number seven is the fresh starter. So uh, yeah, um, for whatever reason, Thailand seems to attract its fair share of misfits, vagrants, and social outcasts that can't seem to get their act together in their home country. Mm. So they come to Thailand where the cheap booze, beaches, and travel brochures have lured them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, good luck. The, the problem <laughs> though is that whatever might have been uh, upsetting you or ailing you in your home country mm. is still going to be doing much the same here mm. in Thailand. Might be. Um, yeah. So Happiness is not geography specific. Mm. No. Uh, but yeah, I, that's kind of a catch-all uh, uh, number there. Uh, uh, it, 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 you can throw anybody who doesn't fit in the other nine categories. <laughs> kind of, we're all looking for a fresh start every damn day, aren't we? Every time we get out of bed, this is the day. This is the day it's going to turn around for Steve. Now, we couldn't have had a top 10 list of, of the nope. types of expats without the next one that seems to get probably more attention than it deserves. Oh, yeah. However, they are well known as sex pats. Bum, bum, bum. So number eight in the top 10 types of expats in Thailand are the sex pats. What can we say? Uh, the, the writer, this genius writer, sex pats are notorious and much maligned. So either mm. sex pats are sharing information with each other or they're getting uh, hacked on uh, online by people that just want to um, troll them. Yeah, I, I don't know if they're much maligned. Uh, Christopher G. Moore has made a career out of writing books extolling the uh, nobility of the sex pat. Many, many, many books have been written and articles and vlogs made about uh, how cool it is to live that life. And uh, I, I, that is probably changing a little bit now as the world kind of uh, shifts its attitudes towards that. But I think for the most part historically here, uh, that guy has been treated like Lord Jim, the, the guy sitting on a bar stool at, at something a go-go at three in the afternoon uh, has been painted by Colin Pipperell and a lot of other writers as a noble romantic figure. And they're not, they're just, you know, guys with too much money and, and don't know too how much to- testosterone. And, and who can't make normal adult relationships with women. And, and this is the, this, their workaround. That's all it is. <laughs> workaround, there you yeah. go, that's what it is. Yeah. Number nine, and uh, I think social media has fed into these people's needs or wants. Um, they are the serial complainer. We're not talking about breakfast cereal here. No, We're talking about the uh, S E R I A L. Constantly. The grumpy old men. The grumpy old men. The endless complainers. Yeah. And now everybody's got a soapbox in their hand where they can ungrammatically pound out with their thumbs a complaint about this, that, or the other thing. The first line like says, uh, nothing, absolutely nothing will ever be as good in Thailand compared to where they come from. Yeah. So a lot of the complaints yeah. are about Thailand. Yeah, guys have twisted their lives into knots in order to arrange staying in Thailand. They've jumped through hoops They've gone to immigration, they've bribed this guy, they've invested in land, they've done all this stuff in order to remain in Thailand so that they can piss and moan about how people drive. They can piss and moan about the stray dogs. They can piss and moan about the hot food. They can piss and moan about this, YouTubers. And, that and this and that. Yeah, and they, they, they make these hour-long videos complaining about putting an S on the word felon. Can you imagine? What a stupid thing to get upset about. Many of these haters and complainers have never been to Thailand, but are happy to share their wisdom, often in chat rooms yeah, and maybe. social media, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, I've experienced the blah, blah, blah. We've got to number 10. All right. But there Drum is roll. 
there is a 10A. Oh, okay. Because the writer suddenly, when he was writing number 10, thought, he remembered oh, hang on, there's another yeah, one. Yeah. Um, the digital nomads, now the people that uh, might be doing their share portfolio on uh, online, mm. going and sitting in a little cafe in Chiang Mai and using their free Wi-Fi and taking up a perfectly good table. But, but these are, I, I think, uh, th there's more of them these days. People working offshore and people legitimately working on their mm. computer. Thailand has made a mistake by not really having a visa specifically for them. So um, it, other countries do have digital nomad visas. Mm. And I think that's a good idea. You don't think highly of digital nomads, generally. Mm. <clears throat> I think no. I, I think a lot of people call themselves digital nomads when they are in fact dividend babies. Uh, they, they've inherited money. They're living off uh, money, their social security, whatever. But they say, "Oh yeah, they wear the YouTube T-shirt, right?" And they say, "Oh, I'm a digital nomad." I don't have a YouTube T-shirt. I don't either. But a lot of people. I think you can just go buy one. Uh, but a lot of people uh, uh, call themselves digital nomads when really they're just <clears throat> people who've run away from home and they live out of a backpack and they they hang out in coffee shops all day long and sit in, and stare at themselves in a in a monitor but they do um rent a, an apartment they mm -hmm. do go out and buy food they go yeah. and fly on domestic yeah, thai airlines they fly away yeah so um, they don't know anything about this place they don't know anything and if you go back and they didn't know anything about goa when they lived in goa they didn't know anything about paris when they lived in paris or wherever they're you know nomads nomads know the route nomads go every year the aboriginals the arabs they go every year waterhole to waterhole following the herds following the, the seasons, north and south, picking grains. They intimately know their territory. These people are not nomads, they're just wanderers. They're constantly a stranger in a strange land, and they don't know anything about this land, and it blurs with all the other lands in their heads. Some of them could be, number 10A, it's a coffee shop, so that's why yeah. there's a coffee machine. They grind their own beans here. You can choose lar uh, dark or light roast, and they'll grind, he roasts, you see that, where is it? You see that? That's a uh, no. That's a window. You're sticking your finger in my ear. There, there's a roaster over here. There's a roaster. He roasts his own beans here, and they make their own pastries, which are fabulous. We recommend. Yeah, Sigma really, Cafe. Yeah, Sigma Cafe. Sigma Espresso. It's out on the highway in the middle of nowhere, as everything is in this province. It's just out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, bike riders come here too mm -hmm. with their click clack shoes. Number 10 is the Keyboard Warrior, uh, and it says uh, they are virtual library of Congress when it comes to dispensing their opinions and vast knowledge about all matters relating to life in Thailand, or anywhere really. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I suppose these are next to the serial complainers, but they're the ones that always want to have the final word in a, uh, a conversation in Facebook, and uh, that they are the, the be-all and end-all when it comes to and there are some people who actually have got, like the Richard Barrows, I mean, I would call Richard yeah. a digital warrior, a keyboard warrior, but I mean, Richard has been here for a long time and he does have a vast uh, amount of knowledge, but there are some people who just, oh, no, 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 I know the answer to that when perhaps yeah. they don't. And I, yeah, I, that's been me. I, you know, my job, I was a medical transcriptionist. I sat alone in a cubicle all day long typing. And my machine would go, bing, you've got a, How somebody has made a, it would go, bing, telling me that I've, uh, this is cosplay, right? <laughs> this is cosplay going on here. And then, never mind, I'm sorry, I'm being rude. I'm being a keyboard warrior. It's a cyclist. At any rate. Who is wearing the. Uh, all the cycle drag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> at any rate, so it would go, bing, and I would immediately leave whatever report I was editing and go, uh, uh, go um, uh, respond, Here you right? Go. And boy, I would, you know, I had been going. Uh, the the specimen the specimen is presented in formal and consists of a. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, well, let me tell you, buddy, and then go back to the specimen is presented in formal and it consists of this and that. And so I've done that. I've just been bored and lonely and pissed off. And this guy has given me an opportunity to vent in the comments section. And I have vented. I hope that retirement has calmed that down and I'm no longer so obstreperous online. But I think every now and then I have a relapse and I go back to uh, 
Like every um, Sunday morning. Like every Sunday morning. Um, okay, there he is. Mm-hmm. So, uh, as the cyclists arrive, um, I'll put a, a link to this um, article, by the way. Brilliant piece of writing. Oh, it's made. It I deserves, don't know yeah. how it was missed uh, in the year it was written. Well, this is why they've a, rerun it. They don't just rerun random stories. This is this is quality journalism right here. Oh yeah, and uh, thanks <laughs> for uh, for that. So from uh, the Sigma Espresso Cafe, uh, we would like to say thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to Steve's channel, Steve Ross with an E. Uh, please subscribe to this channel, of course. And uh, we do look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.